Hello and welcome to Tim's BMW Repairs and Information. And this video is all about getting the most performance out of your 650 or any car with the N62 engine. And why you should never use the sports button but use this method instead. It gives the car much more control, gets the maximum power out of the engine and doesn't make you look a pillock, which I'm afraid the sports button does. So what we do is we'll look at going through a corner using sport mode and then going through the same corner using a more controlled mode using the Stentronic box. Let's try in sports mode. Right, first of all we've dropped down into fifth gear. I can't use engine braking. So I take my foot off the throttle. No, I'm afraid no engine braking at all. So it's really not helping me get into this corner to start with. There we go, steering is stiffened up quite substantially. There we go, let's give it some welling. No, we've dropped down the gear and yeah, I'm loo... Uh, oh my goodness, no, I don't like that at all. Yeah, you see, I'm just sort of kangaroo or bunny hopping around these corners now. Um, that's because I put a tiny bit of throttle on and uh, it puts oodles of throttle on and I can't feather the speed so it's just no so that's why I do not use sports mode it's just completely uncontrollable I should be able to get out in front of that lorry All right sports mode five and a half thousand rpm right I'm done and here we go five thousand rpm and the old valves are clattering around I'm still up at five thousand rpm cruise off into Stentronic mode, down into fourth, full control, I've got engine braking so I don't need to touch the brakes, into third, haven't touched the brakes yet, here we go, just a touch of the brakes to get around the corner, third gear will be absolutely perfect this, get right on the apex, oh Falcons are gripping nicely, oh look at the power through them, that's fantastic, wouldn't have been able to do that with the run flats on that's for sure. There we go, one more blast. There we go, that's the way to do it. Slow down. <laughs> Someone's sure to be wanting to go left there. And there we go, into the second. Oh, that's absolutely lovely. Isn't it? I do love driving the 650, but not using sports mode. Uh, big lorry? Nah, no problem. The old Falcons on there are oh, fantastic grip. There we go, and up to 80 and into drive and cruise there we go very refined got all the power got all the control fantastic i absolutely love the 650 for driving but you've got to ignore the sport control that's for sure because it just makes you look like an idiot now the throttle control on the n62 engine was unique for when it was brought out because up until that point and when we put our foot on the throttle, it either opened the throttle butterfly by a cable or by electronics. So the control of power was always via the throttle body. The further we press the uh, pedal down, the wider the throttle body opened, letting more air into the engine. Now when the N62 was introduced, that changed and instead of controlling engine power via the throttle body it moved to changing the power by the amount of valve lift. That gave a few benefits, I mean there's always compromise with a valve lift. Obviously the greater valve lift you have, the sharper the cam profile, the more bounce you may get and the more rattle you get in the valve train. But a two shallower lift of the valves means you don't get a full charge into the engine. Fantastic when you're just sort of cruising along, got about 10% throttle on and so on. But if you needed performance you wouldn't get it because you don't have sufficient valve lift. So what they do in the N62 engine is the power is all controlled via the valve lift. Well apart from the warm-up phase, when the warm-up phase is in operation then the power is controlled by the throttle body 
rather than valve lift. And the valve lift is set to a predetermined level. Now, as soon as things warmed up, when I let my foot off the throttle, then the valve lift actually reduces to zero. And when I put my foot on the throttle a bit more, then the valve lift, in, lift increases. Now the problem with this is it isn't absolutely immediate because of course you've got control of the valve lift via a motor and a worm gear and that takes time. It's quite a big motor, it's got a, le a little bit of work to do. So when you go into sports mode what happens is that instead of being valve lift control the engine turns into being throttle body controlled and that means that the valve lift is set to maximum and that's great for when you've got your foot flat on the floor and really accelerating but it's not much fun when you're just cruising or you've finished your acceleration phase and you've, you've reached your target speed and you let your foot off the throttle yet yeah, it's very embarrassing because the whole valve train makes an awful clattering noise it's really embarrassing. So, you can still get maximum valve lift not using sports mode, and that's by using steptronic mode. So, when we come up to a corner like this one, into steptronic, forward, forward, that gives us engine braking. We've now got maximum valve lift, and you can hear the valves themselves clattering around in there. But now we've got full control over the engine, give it full power, into next gear, third, and into fourth. And when we finish accelerating, bring the throttle back, uh, bring the steptonic bike back to drive. We go back into being valve lift control, so our valve lift has dropped right back down again. It's not clattering around. So there's two reasons for not using sports mode. First of all, of course, the awful rattle. Well, there's a few reasons. The awful rattle from the valve train, which is really embarrassing. Secondly, there's always a delay from going between throttle body control and valve lift control. So there's a delay as you put it into sports mode. The other problem is if you need sports mode in a hurry, it's not impossible to find the button you're sort of jangling around. Much easier to use sport mode left forward, as quick as that, couple of forward modes, and you're in the right gear for a bit of spirited driving. There we go, lots of power, just as much power as in sports mode. Yeah, don't think the sport, sports mode gives you more power, it doesn't. We've got a limited amount of power. Now having your foot flat on the throttle gives all the power the engine can give. What it does do is change the mapping between the throttle position and the valve lift. So that when you're in sports mode, we're now into throttle butterfly control rather than valve lift control. And the mapping has changed from when we were not in sports mode. So now we've got to a point where we press the, the throttle slightly, I'll do it there, and it actually throws you around the corner um, because the mapping's changed. Whereas if we're in standard mode, we're quite used to how much throttle we need to put down to produce the performance we want. Very busy. Uh, Laurie wants all the road. There we go, we're past. Jolly good. Right, we'll get out onto the motorway and I'll show you exactly what I mean. We're off. Right, so here we are, using manual control of the gearbox. No need for sports mode, we can choose the right revs to get us onto this slip road, nice and sharp round, and then we can use the throttle to control the amount of power we want from the engines, which is all of it, so I've got my foot flat on the floor, there we go, that's the way to do it.
no need for sports mode altogether and I can stick it into fifth or sixth or can stick it back into drive again everything calms down nicely so we're all nice and calm again rather than going completely mad in sports mode so we'll try the same again and show you how it's best to control the car using the gearbox rather than using sports mode Got this garage here right we'll get past that Yeah, I'm afraid sports mode makes you look a complete, complete idiot, especially as these engines, the N62, just love to rattle the old valves around when it's in the overrun. So you finish doing your accelerating, you let your foot off the throttle, it stays up at about 5,000 RPM and rattles the old valves away. Yeah, um, they all do it, don't worry about it, it's perfectly normal. Right, here's our turning. Right, so rather than sports mode, Steptronic mode, down the gear, down another one, that's third. Much better, much more control over the car using engine braking round the corner. Notice the DSC has noticed that I'm doing spirited driving and has actually stiffened up the suspension quite a bit. So here we go. So yeah, using the gears is so much more controlled. Don't need second gear on this corner. So I can feather the throttle, keep up the speed, much better control over it. Very tight entrance here. Lorry on its way, so we'll wait for that. There we go, and we'll slow in. Could have got in front of that one, but I won't. There we go. And Steptronic mode, I can change gears early. There we go. And into fifth if I want. Sixth gear, cruising. So from completely manic periods to just cruising. That's what's so great about using the Steptronic boxes. Whereas the, the sport mode button just will give you gears you really don't want. That's for sure. Into cruise, so there we go finished all our madness. So yeah, I haven't used this sports button since really I had it and I sort of experimented with it and decided that it, well no, it's, it's not pretty. Um, much better to use the throttle. Yeah, someone went straight on there this morning. So there we go, that's why you don't use your sports button, because it just makes you look like a pillock. <laughs> anyway, thanks very much for watching, thanks for subscribing, and I'll see you next time.